Many organizations are looking into GraalVM as a way to speed up startup times for Java-based applications thanks to natively compiled images. Learn more about the real cost savings, speed savings, but also the challenges when it comes to observing native images in Java by watching the session that I just recorded with my colleague, Ivan. Welcome, everyone, to another Observability Lab. You'll see from the screen today we're talking about GraalVM, we're talking about Java native images, we're talking about Maven, Gradle, Spring Boot, Carcass, Micronaut, and many other things. I'm not the expert, but I brought an expert. Ivan, how are you? I'm oh, good, thanks. Who are you? Uh, I'm a project engineer at Dynatrace and one of the people who is responsible for the GraalVM native. Awesome. awesome. So GraalVM, you brought this topic to me because you were really excited about it. We see people are talking about GraalVMs, but there's also observability challenges. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly why we recorded this video today. Maybe let's get started even with uh, talking about why GraalVM is such a big topic right now. Yeah. In uh, cloud and Kubernetes, the resources are not cheap. And the boot time is essential when we need to scale up our clusters quickly to handle load spikes. And uh, when the boot time was a requirement, we used to think about the Node.js, but now Java is playing in the same week. Mm -hmm. uh, here I compare the same Java application running on the same Kubernetes. The purple one is built natively and the gray one is a GVM. And you see how uh, the different is the memory footprint and uh, how different is the uh, first response time from boot. And I have a short demo here I prepared this uh, demo application, uh, which consists of three uh, natively built services and uh, small UI. And one of the services we will try to uh, kill now its uh, pod and see how uh, quickly it boots up and uh, gets ready to service again. And here it's killed mm -hmm. and just a second to wow. it's back. Wow. So if you go back to the slides, that means if I look at this app that you built, it's about 4x lower memory footprint. Mm -hmm. It's 170 times faster in boot and time to first response. And that's a clear argument to say Java is not just a great language, it has a great ecosystem, but it's also not super fast as compared to also Node that people went to. Also, no WebAssembly is a big topic these days. So with Graal native images, there's clear an advantage. Um, I think there's side advantages because you mentioned Kubernetes. What else do we have here that this uh, benefits people that are deploying their apps, let's say, in the Kubernetes environment? Yeah. Uh, when a pod needs a minute to boot, uh, we need to uh, over provision it in order to uh, let our system handle uh, heavy loads until our new pods come to service. Mm -hmm. So, this dotted red line is a maximum load for three pods, but we start the fourth pod much earlier to give the system enough time to boot the new ports and to get it up and running when we cross this red line. But if the boot time is close to zero, we can shrink this gray area mm -hmm. and save uh, significantly on the over provisioning. Mm -hmm. So the native images are not only more efficient in the memory and CPU, but also they do not require that much of over provisioning. Yeah, and, and this is phenomenal. As you said, the cloud is not cheap. Uh, Kubernetes is not cheap, especially if you have to over provision to react to dynamic changes in workloads. So we are scaling up. Uh, and with this, we can actually scale much more efficiently because it's much faster. Do you have any numbers on what this could mean in terms of savings for organizations? Yeah, sure. If we take average uh, CPU and memory cost on AWS and some estimates on the observability solution, mm -hmm. the little resources saved on every port adds up with hundred thousand dollars of annual savings now, and that's amazing. And and a thousand pods is actually not a huge environment, right? We have seen many many bigger environments, but mm -hmm. folks, this alone is just if you are uh, you know looking into Java uh, and you've used Java, then native images really save a lot. I mean, it's, it's hard to to to, um, to grasp this number. So faster in in startup, lower memory footprint. Um, saving costs, but now observability. I know observability is a challenge with native images. What is the real challenge? Yeah, uh, the challenge is uh, that it is impossible to inject into a custom binary when we don't know offsets, like mm -hmm. we do, for example, with the NGINX engine. And uh, 
that's why there is no observability solution on the market. And I will show you how it looks like. So uh, this is a Java application, the same Java uh, application run built natively and as a GVM. Both are running on full stack monitored hosts. Mm -hmm. And you see uh, on the GVM side, uh, all the technologies are detected. Mm -hmm. GVM metrics are collected. Uh, the distributed traces are there. But on the left hand side, there is some other technology, mm -hmm. only basic metrics. And this is probably not something that you would let uh, uh, run on your critical production environment if it's not properly monitored. Yeah, but I mean, guys, that's the only thing you can really get because technically it's a native image, a native OS image, and that's it. So how can we get the observability in? What's Because it says here, you know, it's impossible, but I think you probably made it possible. Yeah, it's impossible, but not for Dynatrace. And here, what we bring today, it's the same uh, task application mm -hmm. built natively, but now it runs with the Dynatrace one agent. Uh, you see the Graal VM native image technology is detected, all the other frameworks are detected, uh, the Java metrics are there. Also, we can uh, look at the service view and see the service metrics, uh, the related services that we call or are being called by some other services, uh, anomaly detection, everything works. Yeah. Also, the distributed tracing is uh, available here and you can do the advanced trace analytics like you used to do with other classic applications. Uh, Dynatrace also offers a nice Kubernetes app where you can see how tiny your code is when it runs a native application. Wow. Um, before you go back, uh, so amazing. That means you have figured out a way to get the same level of observability into natively compiled Java applications as we would have and always had with uh, JIT compiled applications. Uh, you, you showed us the tracing, the metrics, uh, the context when it runs in Kubernetes. Um, how did you do this? Uh, we know that uh, the Graal compiler is also a Java application, so we instrument the compiler to instrument the app when during the build time. And uh, Dynatrace Graal native agent consists of two parts, the build time and the runtime. Build time is embedded into the native image, and uh, the runtime is running alongside. It, it is responsible for, uh, to, for connection to the server, bringing the configuration from the Dynatrace cluster and sending the data there. Uh, these two, uh, two agents uh, should be synchronized in uh, version to run properly. But uh, if your build pipelines uh, include the Docker images, then it's uh, easy to achieve so. And I have an example of GitHub Actions with the CI CD where we uh, did exactly that. Uh, and the first step is to download the one agent from Dynatrace, mm -hmm. then build the native application using Dynatrace Gradle plugin. And we also offer Maven plugin for this. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Gradle plugin, I think Maven plugin, are already published on the Maven Central. You can just apply it here and uh, configure to build your projects natively. As soon as the binaries are ready, the next step is to make the Docker image and publish it on the container register. Mm -hmm. Then you have your Docker image with one agent ready to roll. Really cool, and I really like the elegant solution. So the compiler is actually a Java application. That means we can instrument the compiler, and as the compiler compiles the code into native, we're actually injecting uh, our native components of the agent. So it says your standalone deployment. Um, is there another deployment that is available? Yeah, I also support full stack deployment. Uh, when the full stack agent is running on the same host or Kubernetes cluster, and in this case, uh, the full stack agent can be newer than the ground VM native. So there is no uh, reason to worry about the incompatibility issues if uh, full stack agent has auto updates. And uh, in our current setup, I actually used this uh, full stack mm -hmm. deployment and we have exactly that. The ground agent has version 295 mm -hmm. and the full stack is 299. So four versions is two months difference but they are running perfectly fine. Right. Okay, cool. So that means, folks, if you're using Dynatrace in the full stack mode, let's say you have rolled out the Dynatrace operator on Kubernetes, 
always on the latest version. It will always pick up all the data also from your natively compiled Java images with Dynatrace One Nation from an older version. That's pretty cool. So I understand that people are moving to and looking at into Growl for speed reasons, for all the, uh, the cost efficiencies. Um, there's a challenge with observability of native images. We solved it in a very elegant way. Now we also know that there's an open telemetry uh, initiative going on where with open telemetry, you can also get some of this uh, instrumentation. But I think for our Dynatrix community, we've solved this in a very, very elegant way. Um, do you have something to sum it up in case people are still not uh, convinced yeah. on this? Yeah, sure. Uh, with the efficiency that uh, ground native uh, images bring and powered by Dynatrix observability solution, there is no longer reason to hold uh, with these new technologies and I encourage you to use them to give it a try and save your infrastructure costs with Dynatrace. Amazing folks, the numbers speak for themselves. Um, if you want to try this out yourself, uh, you have a lot of cool things that you showed today. We have Dynatrace resources on the dock. We have the GitHub repository with your sample app. So people can just try the same thing that you have done as well. Folks, mm -hmm. they, um, all of these recordings or all of these links will also be part of the description uh, in the video. With this, I actually want to go into full screen because I want to say uh, thank you so much, Ivan, because this was an amazing session. Thanks for the introduction, but also thanks for building this and making the world of uh, our users, uh, the global community out there easier as they're moving towards things like the Growl VM. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hope to have you back with more topics in the future. Sure. Perfect.